Hello and welcome to this tutorial on dealing with multiple layer keys in After Effects. In this tutorial we're going to look at the issue of how to deal with line problems. In the first tutorial we looked at pulling a basic key. In the second tutorial we looked at how to deal with light spill problems that are different for different parts of our item by using multiple layers. And this is a, an example of what we've ended up with. I've got at the bottom the original and if I turn off the top two layers that's what we originally started and you can see there's lots of light spill on this arm under the arm here and in various other places including obviously through this chiffon and there is light spill on this dress and what we've done is we have created a layer to deal with the skin I'll turn on skin which also took some of the uh, green out of the chiffon but you can see that the green has gone from the skin and the skin looks great but it's still a problem on the dress so we created a separate layer for the dress turn that on you can see that we've now brought the dress back to the original color it should have been. The green you can see underneath is only the green from the original layer. It is not being affected in this item, except of course you may want to do further masks for the hair and other bits and pieces where you may feel that you've got problems. But all you're seeing there is the green from the original item underneath there. Now sometimes when you film in a particular setup and you use certain cameras in certain modes, they can give you lines around the edge of your mat. Now if I just zoom in here, we haven't really got a big problem, but I'm going to use this just as a demonstration. You'll see that you've got a potential line here on this lady's arm, and a potential bit of a line here on her chin. Now what if we felt those lines were bad enough to deal with? I personally think you can probably get away with these. Um, depends what your setup is, but you might be able to get away with these. But let's just pretend for a moment that these are real issues, and we need to get rid of these lines and soften them up. Now what you could do is you could soften up the whole image in one go but that of course would pull the edge in of everything and you'd end up with the image looking very slightly odd. What you need to do is be able to create areas that you can deal with just those specific problems. So I might want to deal with just this area of her arm and possibly a second one for just her chin whereas I might consider that the rest of the image is okay and doesn't need dealing with. This is just an example. And I ought to say again that this footage is courtesy of HollywoodCameraWork.us who allow us to use this footage to create tutorials. So I'm very grateful to them for their green screens. If you want to download this green screen plate, you can get it from HollywoodCameraWork.us and check their site out while you're there for there's lots of other fantastic bits and pieces to learn from, from the materials and resources they provide. Okay, so what I need to do is isolate the area where there is a problem so that the rest of the image is untouched. So I'm going to say for argument's sake that this top of the arm's okay but this side of the arm isn't. Let's have a little look. Got perhaps a bit more of a line on the side of the arm here than we do at the bottom of the arm here. So let's just say for argument's sake that this is where we've got a problem with a line that we need to get rid of. Your problems hopefully will be a lot more obvious than this but this is just an example for how we're going to deal with it. Now I am going to leave the green background on and the reason for this is that I am going to be pulling a key again later on so that I have access to the alpha channel or the edges of this item through key light. So how am I going to deal with these edges? How am I going to get access to this part of the arm where we think there might be a problem? Okay, what I need to do is take this final composition with all its problems solved and drop it into a new comp. So I take my layered comp and drop it into a new composition and I'm going to rename layered comp 2 I'm going to return and I'm going to call this line problems and hit return and I'm going to rename this layered comp layer here layer 1 I'm going to rename that as line problem okay so we've got a line problem layer and a line problem comp and the first thing I need to do is draw a mask around the area where I think I've got a problem so I'm going to zoom in and look at the area and let's just say we feel that the problem is from here to here I'm just using this as an example but um, I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to click outside click and drag click and drag click and drag and I'm going to keep into the middle of her arm you'll see why a bit later on 
click and drag and finish off and there you go we've got the area that we need to deal with now the first thing you must do when you create a mask and when you're keying is keep the edges soft you must feather them because even if you pull a really good key you might find that this edge out here will start to artifact and cause you problems in your production but if it's got a bit of softness to it the chances are that won't be visible so I'm going to go back to my selection tool select the layer and hit F for feather and that will open up the feather properties of the mask and I'm just going to feather it a bit take it out what seven eight pixels just enough to be able to make that edge softer right so now I've got the area that I need to work on um, but of course I can't see the rest of the image what do I do how do I deal with that well the simple thing I need to do is take my line problem layer and duplicate it so command or control D or edit duplicate drag it underneath and rename this one as my base mat now this is the mat that's going to sit underneath the areas that I deal with so that I can see all of them however I don't want the area that I'm going to deal with included in my base mat I want this area excluded and the simple way of doing that is because we duplicated the layer is to open up the mask and simply invert the mask so if I invert it I've got everything back so what I've said is the top layer consists purely of the bit that we're going to deal with and the bottom layer consists of everything except the bit that we're going to deal with but if I click away and I zoom in you'll see that we've got a problem we've got transparency where we had that feather and this is a real problem because we need to have no transparency we don't any holes in our mat and of course I should have said that when I created the first mask what we would have done in normal production is animate it all the way through our production so I'd have gone through and made sure that this mask was animated so that it always surrounded the area that I needed to deal with and once it was animated at that point I would have duplicated the layer and inverted it so that we would have had this mask animating all the way through there's not time to show you the animation you know how to animate masks but always when you create masks in a green screen you're going to have to animate them because your actors move okay so if I click away again you'll see that we've got a problem so what we need to do is create something called a core mat now the core mat will just sit underneath all of this item and what we will do is we will shrink the edges of the core mat just a little so that when we pull this edge back to try and deal with any problems that we've got you don't see the core mat underneath but you still have these areas of transparency filled in so let's create a core mat so I'm going to take my base mat and I'm going to duplicate it so command or control D duplication and I'm going to pull it underneath and I'm going to rename this one select it and rename it core mat and this is the one that's going to sit underneath everything else now we're ready to go except of course if I click away you'll see that we have still got the transparency that's because the mask still exists on my core mat so I need to just twirl that open and delete any masks so select mask delete and now you'll see we've got no transparency however if I now deal with my line problem and start to pull this line back to get rid of any very dark edges all I'm going to see is my core mat underneath which means I must shrink it so that I can only deal with this edge and not have the core mat showing through underneath because the core mat is there really to deal with these transparency issues through the middle okay so how do I do that I'm actually going to do it by applying key light 1.2 again now the reason that I have left the green in here is because key light likes to have something that it's working from a color to work from so that you then have access to the alpha channels that we want to play with the alpha channels are the edges so what we need to do is apply key light to all three areas but what we can do is apply it to one layer and then simply duplicate that to all the others so let's apply key light 1.2 to where it says line problem and the last effect I applied was key light 1.2 so it's at the top here select that take the green picker go right into the middle next to the arm and click and we know from the work that we did before that if we open up screen mat we got the clip blacks to 8 and the clip whites to 84 we found that out in our last tutorial so we know that that's actually going to deal with it and of course I can't see anything screened away because I've still got my other layers particularly my core mat below it so all I need to do is take key light 1.2 select it and copy it control C and then highlight layers 1 and 2 and control or command V to paste it and there you go it's all in place and all of the key lights are using the same settings 
So we know we've got a good map because that's the map we used before. I know that there is a slight problem here and I'm just going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to be dealing with it, but you'll notice that this chiffon is looking twice as thick and that's simply because it is twice as thick. What we'd need to do for this particular example is actually mask out around the chiffon if we wanted the chiffon not to look quite so thick. Um, that's probably why this isn't such a good example to show you um, because of the chiffon but under normal circumstances you don't tend to have semi-transparent areas but because of the way that we're laying these things up you do have a thickness here as I say I'm not going to deal with that we would just have to mask it to get rid of it right so now that we've done all of this the next thing we need to do is shrink our core mat so that we have access to these edges with our other layers it isn't going to cause us any problems so what do we do select the core mat and let's solo it select the solo button so that's just our core mat and now I'm gonna pull it across and zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm gonna do so this is the edge here and with key light 1.2 selected I'm gonna open up screen mat again and you'll see the inside screen mat we've got two items one that says screen shrink grow and the other one says screen softness now this is applied to the whole of the layer you can see that this is my core mat so that when I start to pull screen shrink grow down to a negative value, it's going to shrink the alpha channel, the edge of the whole of my image. And obviously, under normal circumstances, you don't want to shrink the edge of the whole of your image. That's why we're doing these layers. What we're eventually going to do is just shrink the edge of the line problem. But we still need to fill in that area that we had semi-transparent, which is why we've got the core mat. So we need to pull the core mat back so that we can play with these edges. Okay, what do we need to do? Select core mat, and where it says screen shrink grow, we can just pull that back. And you can see that that's actually pulling the edges right back. I'm going to go back to say three pixels. It doesn't need to go back too far. That's quite a lot actually. And that's now going to sit underneath everything else. So if I now turn it off, we're back to seeing the original. But bear in mind now if I select the line problem at the top here, if I start to pull this edge back, it's going to be three pixels I'd need to pull it back before I would start to see the edge of the core mat underneath and I'm not going to need three pixels to deal with this problem so how do I deal with the problem simple same thing screen shrink grow look at the edge you're working on zoom into it if you need to I'm going to zoom in a bit more so that I can really see it clearly and now I'm just going to pull the screen shrink grow back until this edge starts to soften a bit don't really want to go much Pull it back, well that's 0.5 and that's pretty much dealt with the issue. 0.5, minus 0.5 has pretty much dealt with the issue and I can also pull out the one below, screen softness and pull that up a bit. And when I pull that up a bit, what I'm doing is I'm adding in a little bit of softness. If I just do those both back to zero, you'll see what I mean. Zero and zero. That's the original. And if I take my screen shrink go back to minus 0.6 in this instance, minus 0.7, and then start to pull the softness back you'll see that I'm adding a little bit of contrast or a little bit of the skin color back in to give that a much softer edge and it's not so hard and there you go you've actually got the issue dealt with except for one little thing I'd like to point out I click up here and click away to deselect it you'll see that you do have a tiny bit of transparency issue here where the core mat hasn't actually gone to the edge now what you can do is go back to your core mat and if you only had one issue you might have multiple issues in which case you can't quite do this in the same way you can pull out your screen shrink grow until it's not showing but starts to deal with most of these problems now if you remember on the line problem I only needed to pull it back by minus 0.7 so if I pull this up just to minus 1 you'll see that most of that transparency has actually gone away now there is another way to address this a little bit more cleverly if you like which I'm going to demonstrate in the next tutorial but this is how we've managed to deal with it and you can see that there is a tiny issue there but it's hardly noticeable but we've got rid of what will be a far worse sin of a great big horrible black line that you might want to deal with if you feel that there's another area on your map that needs dealing with say we wanted to deal with the chin in the same way what we could do with this layer selected if we felt the same settings would work is simply take our tool, our pen tool and draw around the area that we felt needed dealing with and then what we can do is we can feather that particular mask so hit F 
it'll be under mask 2 which we can just rename as chin and we can feather that out a few pixels as well seven eight pixels and that's added the same settings to the edge of that one of course what it hasn't done is it hasn't cut it out of our base layers if I just go through my layers if I solo the top layer you'll see that these are the two areas that we've applied this key light shrink and grow to so we've got nice soft edges below it we've got the base mat if I just solo the base mat now you'll see that we've got the base mat here with some edges and what we probably want to do is actually cut that out and if we want to be able to cut it out we need to select our chin mask and copy our chin mask command or control C go to our base mat and paste it command or control V and then open up that layer and you'll see that we've now got the mask and the chin we don't want to use invert what we want to use this time is we want to use subtract so subtract for one and subtract for the other and now we've got those bits subtracted from the layer below so that they aren't going to interfere with what we're trying to do and then if I turn off this particular layer you'll see that we've got the core mat underneath which is filling in any spaces that we had and the layer at the top is obviously dealing with the line issue here and the line issue around here and we've ended up with a solution that deals with the line problems and still gives us a really good mat overall so that's how you can get rid of line issues however in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create variable edge feather masks so that when we draw around this arm we can keep the edge feather as minimal as possible here where it's going to have a problem with the core mat whereas we can have a nice wide edge feather around the rest of it because we are using a variable edge feather because we're using another tool and I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial mm -hmm.